Xin chào, hello from Vietnam, known as the land of the ascending dragon because of its geographical shape on the world map. And right now, at this very moment, we are at the Meisheng Sanctuary, recognized by UNESCO as a world cultural heritage. Located at the mountainous border in Quang Nam province in central Vietnam, the sanctuary dates back from the 4th to the 13th century CE. Tower temples dedicated to Hinduism are found within the sacred site. These were made using fired brick with stone pillars and decorated with scenes from Hindu mythology. Many of these towers were damaged during World War II and the Indochina Wars. Since then, restoration and conservation work have been consistently done. After that lesson in history, we moved to the very exciting Tung Chai or basket boat. These boats are made of bamboo shaped into baskets or more like half a giant coconut with a bench inside as seats. Right now I am on the basket boat. Now the basket boat can accommodate about two passengers and of course the driver. It, uh, it's here on the Hoi River. You can have about 30 to 40 minutes and they have activities, one of which is to get on another boat that takes you for a spin. The experience itself is like riding a roller coaster for a very short time but at dizzying speeds. After that, the boats gather around a makeshift stage for a one-song karaoke party, then a minor stop to catch crabs on the side of the river. Our day ended at the Hoi An ancient town. This is a well-preserved trading port dating from the 15th to the 19th century. And as of 1999, a UNESCO World Cultural Heritage Site. At a Hoi An silk factory, we were showed how silk threads and fabrics are created. Everything silk was sold here from table decorations, dresses, to lanterns. It was fascinating watching the sewers create artworks made of silk to be shipped all over the world. The Hoi An ancient town is filled with pedestrian-friendly streets lined with cafes serving delicious Vietnamese coffee, clothes, and souvenirs. And at night, Hoi An lights up as boats ply the river, where passengers can cast a small lantern adrift along with their heartfelt wishes. Here in central Vietnam, people go to Bana Hills. In Bana Hills, we will find this bridge, which is the Golden Bridge. Now, these hands represent the hands of Buddha, while the gold of the Golden Bridge represents prosperity. To get to the picturesque 500-foot-long Golden Bridge, one has to first walk the route, passing through walkways and shops to reach the Bana Cable Car, which holds the world record for the longest non-stop single-track cable car at 19,032 feet in length. It's a comfortable ride fitting eight people per car. The ride itself is 15 minutes long with a nice view of the hills. One advice I can give is to go there early or stay in the area as the Golden Bridge gets packed with people. Another is if you want to take great photos, watch out for the clouds because in a snap, the blue skies disappear and fog sets in. Be alert and snap away. Between the Golden Bridge and the cable car is the French Village and the Bana Hills Fantasy Park. The park is recognized as the largest indoor amusement park in the country. The next morning, we made a picture stop at the Hai Van Pass. This is recognized as one of the world's top 10 most beautiful coastal roads connecting northern and southern Vietnam with an impressive view of blue skies, green forests, and lush mountains. The Imperial City of Hue is one of Vietnam's seven UNESCO World Heritage Sites. It was a walled fortress and palace that housed the imperial family during the Nguyen dynasty. After the monarchy ended in 1945, the imperial city suffered heavy damage and neglect. The site has now been under restoration for several years. The imperial city of Hue has two main parts, the citadel, which served to protect the palaces within, 
and the Forbidden City, which was the home of the royal family. The city is massive, with a circumference of 10 kilometers. We had to ride golf carts to be able to navigate the place. Personally, I appreciated the beauty of Vietnamese history within the walls of the remaining buildings and the furniture within. A few blocks away is the Tian Mu Temple on the banks of the Perfume River. This seven-story pagoda is considered as the unofficial symbol of the city of Hue. To end the day, we went on a relaxing Dragon Boat River cruise on the Perfume River that showed us the changing colors of the charming city of Hue at night. Our last morning began with a visit to the Tuduk Mausoleum. Named so as it was built for Emperor Tuduk, who had the longest reign of any monarch in the Nguyen dynasty. Interestingly enough, the king was not interred here and instead was buried in a secret location and the 200 laborers who buried the king were all beheaded after they returned home to keep the secret. The tomb was built on a vast 12-hectare land that is surrounded by nature. Inside, there are temples, tombs, a theater, and a lake where visitors can sit, relax, and feed fish. A few steps away is the Tui Huan Incense Making Village. On both sides of the Duan Nu Hai Road are incense shops that have arranged walls filled with colorful incense sticks to attract visitors. These backdrops are perfect for photos. I also got to experience making an incense stick myself with the guidance of a local artisan as part of the full incense making village experience. My visit to Vietnam ended with a brief stop by the Dragon Bridge in Da Nang before going home. That was a great, albeit short visit to Vietnam. But before I go home, come on Da Nang, come on Vietnam. Till we meet again. A special thanks to Travel Warehouse Incorporated and Cebu Pacific.